This video was made in collaboration with Jensen. Feel free to check out his channel in the description below this video. For a little over five years, I've lived in a college town in southern Indiana. When I first moved here, my at-the-time girlfriend and I were both working in fast food. So we lived in an embarrassingly small apartment in a dingy and unsettling building. One night, we had a run-in with someone that shook us so deeply that we started looking for a new apartment that very night. First, I should explain the building a little. We lived on the ground floor. The halls were in the shape of a giant T with exits at the ends of two of the three sides. The third side housed the community washer and dryer, directly across from our door. Our usual route in and out of the building was to take the main door, walk the 30 to 35 feet to the T, and go left all the way to the end. When standing right outside our door was when the halls looked most unsettling, as it was a straight shot of maybe 70 feet to the other exit. The walls were a yellowish stained white with sterile, harsh overhead lights and plain brown doors with little peepholes lining both sides. It was generally uninviting. We were aware that the surrounding community was just a little sketchy, given its reputation and the handful of stories we've heard. So when the trash needed to be taken out, the duty fell to me. I didn't mind. I'm a big guy. Six foot one and about 300 pounds, with a fair amount of muscle. But taking the trash out at night always gave me the creeps anyway. In our year living here, I'd only ever seen two of our neighbors, one at the opposite end of the hall, who, more often than not, resembled a blur as they hurriedly closed and locked the door before slipping out the exit, and a surprisingly nice college-age guy across from us. Getting comfortable in that building feels like a mistake now, looking back. Six or so months into living there, the trash had gotten full later at night while cooking dinner. My girlfriend said, I'll get the tacos ready, you run the trash out. I absolutely despised walking down that nightmare of a hallway into the darkness. But at the promise of tacos, I slipped my flip flops on and stepped out onto the hall with the bag. I closed the door behind me and when I looked up, my heart stopped. At the other end of the hallway stood a large man, even by my standards. He didn't look very heavy, but he was certainly taller than me. He wore a large coat over a hoodie and sweatpants. He was standing perfectly centered with the exit and the end of the hall, shoulders squared, staring directly at me. I thought to myself, well, that's pretty freaking weird, but Surely it's nothing. I tried to avoid eye contact as I walked toward him, taking the right turn out the main exit as I usually would. I took maybe 15 steps, rolled the badge into the dumpster, and turned to find the man standing directly inside the door, staring at me through the large glass pane. I froze. Shoot, I'm gonna get stabbed, I thought to myself. I had no idea why this man would be interested in me, but now he was blocking my only sensible re-entry, unless I wanted to dive through my living room window. I swallowed my fear and walked toward the door. As I neared, he opened it for me. Oh, you're coming out? I instinctively grabbed the door and stepped to the side for him to leave. No, he said. We sat there for a second, staring each other down uncomfortably. Okay, I said forcing an insincere smile. I slipped past him and started walking down the hall. To clarify, it didn't seem like there was anything wrong with this man. He didn't seem at this point to be on drugs or anything that I could chalk all this weird behavior up to. I'd almost made it to the turn at the end of the hall when I heard him say, hey, from behind me. He'd followed me just a few steps. I'm waiting for my friend in 15. She said she'd be here in about 10 minutes. Do you mind if I wait in your apartment with you? My heart started racing. I don't know what he wanted, but he was not getting it. Oh, I don't know, man. My girlfriend is kind of weird about strangers, and I'm sure you're not bothering anyone out here. 
I said, trying to sound like I wasn't freaking the hell out inside. Silence for a couple seconds. What's your girlfriend's name? I think I know her, he said flatly. At this point, I was physically tensing, preparing to fight this guy off if I needed to, and thinking my discomfort was beginning to show on my face. Against my better judgment, I said, only her first name, almost as a test. Ashley. He responded immediately with, oh yeah, I know her. She's friends with my friend in 15. That wasn't true. I knew that wasn't true. We'd never met whoever lived in that apartment. I decided that it was just better to go, even if it meant upsetting this guy. I just started walking toward the apartment. Well, I'll see you later, dude. Don't worry, you aren't gonna upset anyone by chilling out here. Have a good night. I said, picking up speed until I was practically running for the door. I made my way inside and locked it behind me, the panic playing on my face. What's wrong? Ashley asked. I looked out the peephole and whispered, I just ran into the weirdest guy and started explaining what had happened. Halfway through my explanation, I heard a loud bang on our door. We both jumped and Ashley let out a noise. I looked through the peephole once again, and to my shock and absolute horror, the man was standing outside our door, staring into the peephole only inches away. I could see him mouthing something, but couldn't tell what. I grabbed the kitchen knife and mouthed for Ashley to call the police. She did and handed the phone to me, and I began explaining what had slash was currently happening. They asked me to describe what he was wearing, but I was drawing a blank, so I looked through the peephole again to see. My heart once again stopped. I couldn't see anything. It was pitch black. I told the officer and they rushed someone out just in case this man meant us harm. About half an hour later, things were quiet until there was a knock at the door. A police officer made himself known, so I opened up. I could then tell why I couldn't see anything. The man had climbed on top of the dryer, taken down the panel in the ceiling, and taken the bulbs out of the fixture in the front of our door. They said they'd searched the entire property and found no sign of anyone that didn't belong there. Now my wife and I live in a much better and safer community. And I still always, always wear my gun when I take out the trash. In April of last year, my boyfriend and I were walking home from our friend's house. I had just finished my first year of college and we wanted to go out and celebrate and have some fun. We live in a rural town and our friend lived on the far side of it, so our walk was about half an hour or so. I had a drink or two and smoked some of the joint they had rolled and smoking makes me paranoid, and this night was no different. Anyway, we left at maybe 10 or 11 p.m., and everything was perfectly normal, until we got to the end of the long street that would eventually lead to my house. This street always felt so long to walk, like hours can pass and you can barely make a dent in the amount of steps made. The street we turned on to this road was maybe 10 blocks from my house. A few minutes after we turned onto the road, I felt something was off. But my boyfriend said that I was stoned and reminded me that I'm a pretty paranoid person to begin with. I really am. This white pickup truck that was parked in front of some house turns on and begins to drive slowly away and would then park. I watched it to see if it was just me being paranoid or not, but it proceeded to stop a couple houses down and sat there with the car still on. As soon as we get close, it would drive away, parking a little further away. This continued until we got to the end of my street. At this point, I kept telling my boyfriend that I'm not paranoid and that this truck was messing with us and he had gone quiet. A couple houses down from mine, this truck drives to the end of the street, my house on the corner. There's a dead end right by my house because we live near a river. It stops for a moment at the dead end and proceeds to turn and turn on their high beams and begin to slowly drive towards us. My boyfriend sticks his arm out in front of me, stopping me from walking any further as this truck continues to approach. My house is so close yet so far. This truck slowly drives by us, 
The windows are tinted, but we can see two silhouettes. And because they had blinded us, we didn't think to look at the license plates, or even the model of the truck. I swear I felt like that was the night I was going to die, or worse. My thoughts hurled around in my mind, and I could see that my boyfriend was in the same mindset. My boyfriend, being pretty quick on his feet, waited until the truck disappeared from sight and took my hand before racing to the house and locking the door. He had thought about turning down one of the other streets so we could try to lose him, but he figured that he'd wait until they were out of sight and then book it to the house so that they couldn't see which house we went in. We looked out one of the front windows very carefully and saw this truck come back into view and began to drive around the block presumably looking for us. This went on for 10 minutes. I called the police to inform them that we had been followed, but without the license plates or model, they could only keep their eyes open for suspicious white trucks. I was adamant that these people had to know one of us, if not me, because they drove until they were beside my house. Whether they actually knew it was my house or not, I don't know. My boyfriend tries to insist that it was probably a bunch of kids trying to mess with us, but I don't believe that. A few days later, we heard that someone was picked up and was last seen in a white truck. Since this night, there have been many stories in the paper and online that people have been grabbing other people, and these people were trafficked in the area. I'm still seeing reports even today, which prompted this unsettling memory. It makes me wonder if they were some of these people. And if they were, were they after both of us or just one of us? Or were they truly just a bunch of jerks trying to mess around with us? Either way, I don't care to know. But whenever I see a white truck, I become on edge. It may be silly, but the events of that night are still fresh in my mind. So to the people in the white truck, let's never meet. A few years ago, I went camping for the first time in my life. I was about 11 or 12 when we headed out to the forest nearby our house. We were in Poland for the holidays. As every year, and right next to our house, was a huge forest. So one day we decided to take out my mom's old tent. She still had from like the 90s, and just stay for a night or two in between some wildlife. Good thing, the place we chose to sleep was only about 20 maybe 30 minutes away from the house. Bad thing, there are a lot, and I mean a lot of wolves, foxes, and boars on the forest. And honestly, I kind of regretted going there in the first place. We set up everything up around 6 p.m., and my sister and I set up the campfire. My dad chopped down a smaller tree earlier with an oak axe, important later for the story. And by now, I had dried out enough to catch fire. We sat around it for quite some time, probably around four hours until it was dark, so we decided to just head to sleep then. My two sisters and I on one end of the tent, and my parents on the other. It was probably just the fear of getting eaten alive by some wolves or homesickness that I couldn't sleep at all. I heard my dad tell my mom that he was going to the forest to get some wood for the morning while it was still fairly dry or it would have all soaked up the dew by then. The thought of not having my dad around made it even worse for me to even close my eyes for a second. I'm not too good at telling what time it is by just staring at the sky, or trying to figure out how long it has been. So I'll just say it was around 12 or 1 in the morning. I was actually falling asleep when I heard some rattling outside the tent. My first thought, woof. I was terrified, so just popped my head out through the little curtain that separated the two halves of the tent. Basically, a piece of thin fabric just hanging on some threads to see if my dad was back. He was still gone, and it's been about an hour since he went. I lay back down and tried to fall asleep, but when I turned myself on my side, I saw this faint human shadow outside the tent. I froze and let out a teeny squeak. The person seemed to be holding some sort of axe shovel type thing in his hand and so I thought it may have been my dad's back. The shadow walked towards the entrance of the tent and just stood there at the zipped up door for maybe 30 seconds. I began to wonder why he wasn't just coming inside. The person finally ran off into the forest 
but it dropped the axe. You could hear the footsteps fade in the distance and a thump just appear along the way. Maybe a minute or so later I heard my dad walking back to the opposite side of the forest and into the tent all tired and just fell asleep. It seemed kind of sketchy and fishy, scary to me, but it was late. I couldn't even think anymore and I somehow fell asleep. The next morning I woke up after my dad dropped his phone on his face, letting out an ouch. I peeped through the curtain at him and he just smiled back while rubbing his nose. I needed some fresh air because I was feeling a bit sick. Maybe from the nerves in the morning or homesickness. I couldn't really tell. Both of us got out of the tent and walked around for a while. We circled around the campsite for around 10 minutes until we got back to our tent. That's when we noticed something that ran chills down my back. A few meters from the tent, in the corner of my eye, I managed to catch a glimpse of something red. It took me a hot second to realize I actually saw something, and when I turned my head to see what it was, it was a red and black rubber axe. It was not there before. I knew it wasn't my dad's because his was by the pile of wood he collected that night. From my dad's reaction, I probably turned pale because he started to freak out a little, like I was about to pass out or something. He turned his gaze to where I was looking and we both just started to stare for a few seconds before he called out for the rest of the family to wake up and get moving. We were all packed up within an hour and we rushed back home. I later told my dad what I saw at night and he wouldn't believe me at first. I carried on with the story and he finally realized I was telling the truth. To this day, I still have no clue who the fuck that was, but I'm just happy he didn't investigate our tent any further, or any other animal out in the forest. To first start this off, I live in a little city in SoCal with my roommate, who happens to be my cousin. During this coronavirus pandemic, however, I've been staying with my parents who live in a very small town in North Cal. Because of my time in SoCal, I really do not like staying in North Cal, and I would rather live back in my apartment. The reason why I haven't done it is because my parents might think I will get very lonely there since everything is closed down, and my roommate is not there as he's also with his parents. However, since I had to go back for a specific reason, my parents wanted me to take their dog, Mocha, so I wouldn't feel as lonely staying there. I loved her, so I didn't mind one bit. Mocha is a small pomshi dog that loves to play around with me, and is usually by my side for most of the time. She also loves to go on runs with me, so I occasionally do take her on jogs. On a Wednesday night, I decided to go running with her. Whenever I go on any runs, I go at night because that's the time I get the most energetic. And all the times I went running at night, I never had any type of encounters or occurrences. I put Mocha on a leash and we went off. About 20 minutes into our run, I was running through this creek. And where there was a park next to it. And a bunch of trees surrounding it. Houses to the other side. The trail was pretty narrow. And the street lamps were pretty dim. But still bright enough to see up ahead. As I'm running with music playing, my lease was tugged by Mocha. This usually happens when she wants to go to the bathroom. So I stopped to let her do her thing, and when I turned around, she was in her alert stance, looking straight beyond where I ran. I just assumed that she hadn't seen a squirrel, or any small animal, as she usually does this when she sees one. I was tugging her leash, telling her, Let's go, there's nothing there. She didn't oblige at first. She just kept looking behind us. It took me about four to five tugs before she finally came to me. I resumed playing my music and we both went off running. I was almost out of the creek and then I would meet a narrow sidewalk that was straight ahead. The trail only had a few short turns. Probably a minute or two later, Mocha tugged the leash again and went on her lurch stance behind us. She did an aggressive bark and started growling. I stopped and I was looking around all behind us. I was kind of freaked out because the trail had a couple turns and curves. This means that something was most likely following us. My first guess was a lost dog, which wasn't selling because Mocha is tiny. If it was a big dog, it can easily overpower her. And as I was looking around the dim area, for a split second I got a black humanoid figure about 15 yards away from me 
right behind a bush next to a tree. I immediately turned my eyes to the opposite direction and pretended that I didn't see him, but boy was my heart pounding. I didn't see any figures or his face, I just saw the outline of his upper body. I didn't have any weapons on me as self-defense. If this guy is following me, my best situation is to run off without him trying to catch me. I tried to act cool and told Mocha to let's go. The trail was going to end. I just had to make a turn and would be a straight sidewalk for about 300 to 400 yards. There are fences on both sides of the sidewalk, so the only solution was to keep running forward. It went as a jog ride, as I turned the corner and made sure that I was out of view from the person. I went on a full sprint as quietly as I can. The sidewalk ahead of me, so I made sure to just keep on running. I kept looking behind me to see if I was really being followed. About 70 yards away, I saw a person come to view from the turn, and then sprinted as fast as he could towards me. As if I wasn't sprinting, I went sprinting as fast as I could. I've never sprinted as fast in my life. Looking back at it, I'm amazed at how fast I ran. Mocha was keeping up with me. About a hundred yards of me sprinting, I looked back. The fucking guy was still running behind me. He had a dark hoodie on, sweatpants, and appeared to be six feet tall. He was still in the same distance that I noticed him, which means that he was pretty fast as well. The sidewalk was going to end at about a hundred yards, and it will lead to a neighborhood. I can lose him there. I was slowly getting out of breath and my adrenaline was beginning to die down. I kept sprinting hoping I wouldn't get too tired quick, 100 yards of me sprinting. I finally made it to the neighborhood out of breath. This neighborhood was pretty broad so if I were to keep running this person would have spotted me right away. And at the pace he was running it didn't seem like it was a good idea. My best solution was to hide. I went straight to a random house and jumped over their backyard where I would be kept hidden behind the fence. I basically threw Mocha over and myself. We were both panting, but I tried to keep quiet as I heard footsteps coming by. The guy had finished the trail and was now in the neighborhood. He stopped running and I heard him panting. I was hearing him mutter as if he was out of breath. He kept saying, Fuck. What the fuck? I was holding Mocha scratching her so she wouldn't bark or growl. About five minutes later, I heard footsteps walking away, and then slowly fading. I waited about ten minutes in complete silence to be sure that he wasn't too close by. I peeked my head above the fence, and I was all alone now. I got mocha and went to the opposite direction from where I heard the guy go. Even though I was tired, I tried to jog just so I can get home sooner. I kept looking around me, and I kept looking around me, I was very paranoid that the guy would be there somewhere. I made it back home with no problem, and I got to thank Mocha for pretty much telling me that someone was behind us, and stalking us. I don't know how long he was following us, or what he was planning to do. I just hope he didn't get a clear glimpse of my face, because I don't want to run up to him again. First, let me start off with some background. I've been going to the gym for about six years consistently every single day and mostly in the evenings around 8 or 9 p.m. And my workouts usually last until 10 or 11 p.m. Around summer of 2018, I switched to LA Fitness, which is a really big health club chain, etc. I've been going there for about six months when an older man around his 30s, early 40s, I say old because I was 18 at the time, and that seemed old to me began to approach me nearly every single time I was at the gym. He was Hispanic, shorter, around 5 foot 8, and I believe he told me his name, I forgot it. As well as how old he was, which I also forgot. Now keep in mind I am 18 years old, 5 foot 2 female. So in the beginning, I took his attentions to be friendly, and I was friendly back to him. But I tried to end conversations quickly because he liked to chat for a long time. Yeah, I just wanted to get my workouts done. In the beginning, when he first started approaching me, he would tell me that he thought I was very beautiful, that he would love to take me out for dinner, and drinks, etc. He asked for my name and how old I was, which I told him because I thought it was innocent enough. He also told me that he had a very young daughter with his ex whom he described as psycho, and he told me that he would love for me to meet his daughter. 
Obviously, I brushed all these invites off and eventually I began to get really annoyed. I would dread showing up to the gym because I didn't want to be approached by him. One day, after about a year of him approaching me, nearly every day, regardless of me changing my times and going to the gym, he would spend hours there. An older gentleman who was exercising a bike began to notice this man come up to me. By this time, I had been ignoring the creepy guy every single time he approached me for several weeks, pretending to focus extra hard on my workout and be listening to my music. He stood next to me and began speaking, calling my name and trying to get my attention, but I just kept ignoring. After a few minutes, I guess he started feeling awkward and walked away. The gentleman behind me got my attention and told me that he had seen this guy talking to me several times and even watching me work out from a distance every time I was at the gym and that I should report him and straight up tell him to leave me alone because what he was doing was harassment. I told him thank you and just decided to brush it off as him just being an extra creepy dude. The next time he tried to approach me, I told him to leave me alone, that I had a boyfriend and that I was not interested. After that, he left me alone. Occasionally, I would work out with one of my friends who told me she had noticed a stranger, older Hispanic man watching me work out at the gym, but I just brushed that off too. I know I sound really stupid, I truly thought he wasn't a threat though. Flash forward, December of 2019. I was near the end of my workout, it was around 11pm, when I noticed him at the gym. I didn't think he had spotted me yet, so as soon as I saw him, I decided to cut my workout short and began walking to the front doors of the gym. I had one headphone in and one out, just in case. The gym was relatively empty by that time, so I was a little nervous to walk alone to my car. In the dark, even though I had parked close to the entrance. As I was about to reach the doors, I hear him calling my name. Stephanie! Stephanie! I immediately began to panic, and I started walking faster. He, I shit you not, started tapping my back and gripping my arm, still saying my name. By this point, some people in the gym had started to pay attention, and I briefly turned to him and yanked my arm away. I ran out of the gym and to my car and locked the doors and left. He had never done anything like that before, so I was so shaken by it. By the time I went to work out again the next day around 8pm, I had talked myself out of being scared and decided I would just keep an eye open and be extra cautious of him if he showed up. I was working out by the dumbbell area on the far end of the gym, where the benches are and a mirror spanning the whole wall. Machines and workout equipment were behind me, and through the mirror I could see everything going on. I see him enter and walk to a machine a few feet behind me and so I begin hearing my workout. I finish the set of exercises I'm doing and I look up into the mirror to see what he's doing and I see him smiling at me from the machine to the mirror. I get immediate goosebumps and begin to put all my equipment away. I avoid looking in his direction or the mirror at all. When I came back to pick up my water bottle, which I had left on the bench I was working out on, I briefly noticed something sitting on the bench next to mine. I looked at the mirror to scan my surrounding area. Right next to me is him, again, staring at me in the mirror. Extremely on edge and nervous by this point, I immediately leave, asking one of the front desk attendants to walk me to my car. I got in my car and locked the doors and called my boyfriend to tell him what had happened. After 10 minutes of talking in the parking lot, I noticed a big truck directly across from me turn on and turn their brights on straight to my face. I thought it was strange, so I squinted into the light to see who might be there. It was just the outline of a smaller man. I quickly realized it must have been the guy from the gym, and so I booked it out of there, checking my mirrors to see if anyone was following me. By that time, I was shaking, and I noticed the truck pulling out of the parking lot and driving behind me. I still couldn't clearly make out who it was, but I was freaking out. I drove almost all the way home with the same truck still behind me. I quickly realized I couldn't literally just lead this guy to my house because out of all the stupid things I'd done so far, that would have been the stupidest. I pulled into the grocery store parking lot that was lit and really populated and waited to see what he would do. 
He kept driving past me, and I waited 20 minutes before driving home, making sure I was not being followed. After all of that, you would think that I would change gyms and call the police. Well, no. 18-year-old me still denied that it was 100% him, or that anything would happen to me. The rest of the week, I had no encounters of him, and so the incident began to leave my mind. The next Tuesday, it was January 2020 now, I was at the gym once again around 11pm. I had finished my workout and was about to leave. I hadn't really paid attention to whether the guy was there or not, and I scanned the gym once before leaving, but I didn't see anything. I headed to my car, got in, forgot to lock the doors, and sat there texting my boyfriend, asking when he would call. We were long distance at the time, so we usually called that night. All of a sudden, someone started knocking my window. I jumped slightly and looked out of my car, and it was him. He starts calling my name, and I can see him reaching down the door handle. Somehow in those few moments, I remember I hadn't locked my doors, and I immediately hit the lock button. The smile that was formed on his face is one that I will never, ever forget. He looked almost smug, like he knew that even that wouldn't help me began banging at my window, telling me to unlock and open the door, repeatedly. Eventually, he moved to pulling on the door handle. In retrospect, I realized my first instinct should have been to call the police. But in that moment, I decided to call my boyfriend. My phone instantly hooked up to my car's Bluetooth, and it started to ring very loudly, even on the outside. I think that's what really what saved me. As soon as he heard the ringing, I assumed he believed I was calling the police. And he immediately ran away and got into his car, one over from mine. He pulled out and it was the same big truck that had been shining its headlights at me and had been following me almost all the way home a week before. I was shaking with fear and talking to my boyfriend, explaining what had happened. And I also called my mom and told her what had happened. I don't know why, but I never called the police to report it, mostly because I wasn't sure if they would believe me or that I had any evidence to back me up. But I have since then changed gyms, gotten a taser, and I work out only during the day. And I look over my shoulder every single time I'm somewhere alone. I still wonder what would have happened that night if I hadn't remembered my doors were unlocked. He could have been a rapist, kidnapper, serial killer, sex trafficker, anything. Even just a desperate man. Either way, weird gym dude. Let's not meet. If you enjoy Creepy Nights content, let us know. Give us a subscribe, a thumbs up, or in the comments, let us know your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. Also, check us out on Instagram for more horrifying content. And if you have any stories of your own that you would like me to personally narrate, check out our subreddit. Until next time, my friends.